Hello everyone, it's Ethan from the Orlando Tours and today I may have clickbaited you but it's not fully clickbait. We won't be riding Velocicoaster today but we still will be riding something new and I will later on discuss about how you can soft open Velocicoaster in the near future when that becomes available for all riders. Yeah. So anyways, I still am riding something new today so stay tuned to see what that is and we are back here today on Saturday, April 17th so let's get into it. haven't been here since the new Universal Studios store did open, so we are going to go check that out today. It looks like they have some Velocicoaster merch on display over here, but we have looked at the Velocicoaster merch in some previous videos already. Now let's go in. Okay. It's pretty cool in here. They have a lot of Jurassic Road right over here. Marvel down here. They have some minions. They're so cool with the core. They got a pickup location here. They got keychains, a whole wall of them. They got pins. And this is the new Universal Studios store. Here's the new Popeyes mask. And they have a few Hello Kitty masks as well that are new. And these are the other Harry Potter masks. Some lanyards. They have this really cool screen over here, right by the cash register. It's really cool. They do show a Velocicoaster clip in here as well, but we might not see that. And they have some retro merchandise. They got like other generic Universal Studios merchandise over here. Looks like they have a fitting room that'll eventually be open later on. Cool lighting. It's actually pretty cool. A whole Harry Potter section over here. The store is way bigger than it looks on the outside. They got some models over here, you got Gringotts Dragon. You got a whole Harry Potter room. It looks like Dumbledore's office in the castle. The wall. They have a whole wand display and I think you can turn these. Yeah, you can turn the display. You see all the different wands here. They got three displays, one, two, and three. And yeah, the store looks really good, so it's pretty neat. Just opened recently. So that store is really cool looking, and if you do have the chance, I do recommend stopping by and getting some merchandise from there. But we're going to head back to the Universal Legacy store now. We were here for the last couple visits, but they've since made more changes to the store. We're going to go check them out right now. So before we even enter the store, as you can see, they have some of the gargoyles right outside the store protecting the entrance. These gargoyles were on either side of the original Universal Archway when the park first opened a while ago. They added the legacy wording up there. And they've since added more props in the store, so let's check them out. So this is all the same since we've been here. These photos right here, they are new. And then... They still have the masks here. The masks are $8 for each or three for 20. We have some Jaws props over here and these are not for sale. It just tells you what the prop is. That was used by the boat captains on the ride. It's the grenade launcher. We have more Amity Island concept art. You have the Back to the Future hoverboard. Wild West stunt show. E.T. You have like prop boxes. This 
gargoyle was used on the Ghostbusters show, one of the statues, and this is a proton pack right here, and another one down there. This is a cash register looking thing over here. Looks like a shirt fabric thing, so you can get custom shirts. And they have all these little screens around the store. And they show different video clips from the old attractions. And this is where you can design phone cases too as well. It looks like they've moved E.T. to the back of the store. He used to be in the front. This is some parking things from, looks like the streets of Universal. You got confrontation right there. A whole mummy display. Like the signage and everything. They got more mummy signage up there. Men in Black, this is all the same stuff from last time. You got Terminator right over here. Little skull right there. And it's all the same around here for now. And if we keep walking over here, we have a Haggard's motorbike, and this is screen used in the movies. Uh, I think it was That's pretty shortly cool. after they opened They have some like oh, Weasley, some different gadgets here, and trinkets. <laughs> Looks like new legacy store signage <laughs> as well. And then if we go over here, you know where Mel's Diner is? Yeah. We have like a little store right next 3D to that. model okay. of the Wizarding World. This looks really cool. Got the castle. You have the Jurassic Park arch. You have the hippogriff. You have the, the bridge that leads into Jurassic Park. The entrance into Hogwarts. This is a pretty cool model. You got Hagrid's hut right over here. So that's really cool. I don't know what this is all made of, but it just looks really nice. You got Harry Potter stuff on the back wall. And that looks to be it from the store. You have the other Ghostbusters gargoyle there. And that's actually the Triwizard Cup from the Dragon Challenge queue under it. So that's really neat. This is cool as well. This was used in the Terminator show. This has got the jacket and the guns and some of the other props used in Terminator 2 3D. So that's really cool to see in the store. That recently closed in the last few years. When you enter, they actually also do have a Jaws wax mold you can get for $6. So that's pretty cool. And that'll do it for us in the Universal Legacy Store. So we're going to head into the parks now. So today looks like it's going to be a busy day. We're headed in and the first thing I noticed on the Universal Arch is that they still have Mardi Gras going on. They recently extended it a second time with the new end date of May 2nd. So that gives you guys more time to come and use your tasting lanyards and enjoy the food around the park and catch beads. So we just got into the park. We have Hello Kitty right over here. We're heading around the park now. Some busy waits already. We did not come today for early admission, but they did have early admission in Islands of Adventure. So, if you're here visiting, I recommend taking advantage of the early admission if you can take advantage of it. And if you want to avoid the crowds, I do have a video on how to conquer the spring break crowds. Even though it's spring break, it does pretty much apply to all the seasonal crowds. So no one is throwing beads right now on this float. So maybe people will be out later. No one's out right now. So if you come early in the morning, don't expect beads to be thrown. If you look up over here, we do have hashtag the panda in the window waving to guests. There it goes. So we just got off Mummy, didn't need a virtual line. 
Um, wait said 40 minutes, but it really wasn't too bad. So now we're gonna head to Men in Black because we are going to the Men in Black 21st anniversary meetup today. It, Men in Black's 21st birthday was on Wednesday, but we are having a meetup this Saturday. And Dave Cobb is gonna be there as well, and he's one of the attraction designers from Universal Creative. So we're gonna do an interview with him as well and meet up with the whole Men in Black group from Facebook as well. So we are coming up to the Men in Black right now and the meetup starts at 11 and it's about 10.45 so we're here a little early but there's people already here so we'll see what's going on. So right now it's 11.04 they just closed the ride just so we could do it for the meetup so we could ride as a group. This is some of the people here for the group right now. We're waiting on Dave Cobb, but these are the people here right now. If you join the Men in Black 900 group on Facebook, you can go to events like this as well. It's free, and you don't even have to have a score. You don't even have to max out to join the group. You could join as a normal guest. So they closed off the ride, and we're about to wait. We're about to just go in. So it's gonna be crazy. So we are here with Nick from the Men in Black 900 group on Facebook. Would you like to give a little brief explanation of what the club's about? It's really a, cl a club about how much we love the ride. We also like to go on and try to max out on the 99999 is the top story you can get on there. Also tutor other people on how to get to that. Just generally getting together and meeting people. I mean, we're really a group about bringing each other together. We also do the ride-alongs, and as you learn more, a lot of those people turn into people to do ride-alongs with, to learn more, for, teach other people, things like that. So, if you haven't maxed out before, you're struggling to max out, do you think the, the club will definitely help you? Oh, it'll definitely help improve your score. I mean, whether you're like 100,000, 200,000, there's so many great tips from so many good people in the group. And then there's guides on the group. Oh, there's definitely yeah. guides. There's also a great YouTube video from you on there. Yeah, that I made really a helps video. a lot of people. So out. there's a lot of guides on the website, on the Facebook group to help you max out. And then, are there a lot of people on the group? Uh, we just surpassed 3,100, I think, yesterday. That's crazy. Considering we were at 200 a year and a half ago, is insane to be able to see then, how much it's grown. And then I also heard that they do ride throughs. So they help you um, improve your score. They'll ride along with you. Oh and yeah, a lot of our members will post one there in the park, and if they get a good score, they'll more than willing to help people that are trying to achieve a higher score or that max out. We'll give tips. And then the group is also free, so anyone can join. There's oh, no, of course. So it's all all of it's free. Everyone's very helpful. Yeah. We do a lot of hand out a lot of club buttons, and we hold meetups like we are today. We just want to get everybody together. To, be able to meet each other and for the love of the ride. I mean, the ride turned 21 years old on Wednesday. 100 million riders. That's, That's amazing crazy. Amazing. It's crazy. For a ride. So, yeah. So, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, hope you all join the group. I'll link it in the description. So, thank definitely you check much. it out. Really no appreciate it. Yep. No problem. So, Velocicos is testing it now. There you see it.
meetup did just finish. Um, it was really successful, really fun. Um, definitely join the Men in Black 900 group. I'll put the link in the description. It's free and you can really learn how to max out. It's really good and helpful. by Che Alcatraz and it looks like the jaw statue is still gone this week hasn't returned yet it's been gone for a while we'll update you on when jaws returns so you can get photos with him so we're here today with Dave Cobb and he was one of the creative directors for the men in black alien attack attraction at Universal and we do have a few interview questions and I did ask for interview questions on my Instagram page so some oh cool so some of the followers did have some questions oh for you. awesome so we have the first one, how did you become involved with Universal Creative? So uh, my first job in high school, my summer job in high school was as a tour guide at Universal in Hollywood. So I sat on the trams and gave the tour. Thought I wanted to work in the movie industry. At a certain point I found that there were um, job postings uh, on, on the lot for this department called Universal Planning and Development. It wasn't called Universal Creative at the time. And it was like a PA job, it was like an office PA, like, like on a movie. And I, I applied for it and got it and the rest is history so it was like I didn't really point myself at this industry I sort of stumbled across it um, but yeah so it started by working in a park it's pretty actually. cool so then we have was the ride originally designed to be impossible to max out of <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of like my I'm this is 21 years ago so my memory's a little hazy but um, yes when we did play testing we sort of set score levels so that it would be very difficult to max out. What I don't know is if they have changed those since I left. So it's yeah. quite possible that they've changed it to, to make it easier to get higher scores. Yeah. Um, I know that part of the reason is also the two guns. Remember it used to have two guns. You may not you may not be old enough to remember that. There were two different gun types. The one that's in there now we lovingly call the, the pickle or uh, Zed calls it yeah, jum have, Jumbo have, Judy in the like pre-show. The, they have the little, um, the little cricket. And then they have the little like rickety ones. Yeah, so the, the little the lights you're talking about on the sides? No, no yeah, the, the yeah, the, so the, the gun that has the lights on the sides is the only ones they use now. Yeah. Um, the, the pickle or jumbo judy. Um, the they had the cricket, the noisy cr really? a, a version a noisy cricket model two. Um, but the problem was, if you notice on the pickle, the, the, the panel on the back that shows you the red and green lights uh -huh. is like perpendicular to your view. Mm -hmm. So you keep it in your sight as you're firing. The cricket, it was angled, and it uh, caused people to aim like that. And so everybody got lower scores with the cricket because it was harder to aim. Was the cricket a better gun? No, no, it was, was a worse gun because uh -huh. Because it was a, a your your aim was the way no, you held it, it made it, you it, naturally aim wrong. But the gun itself, like, did it shoot the same? Like, yeah, it was exactly the same. It was exactly the same. It was just to, to create some visual difference in the ride, so it was always random which one you would get. Oh, but they cool. got a lot of complaints about the cricket being um, inaccurate, and it wasn't that it was inaccurate; it was that the ergonomics of it were not the making up for use. just yeah. harder to use. Yeah. So that's why they got rid of it. But. Um, so I really don't know if they've altered the scores. I would assume they have over the years. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, to be honest, I can't max out. I couldn't max out when we, when we programmed it. So I'm in awe of the people who can. I suck at that thing. Yeah, I've maxed out twice so far. So. Good for you, man. Oh, That's I awesome. I got it today, too. I got, like, 926. I got oh, the bonus. Today. I'm rusty, man. I could, I could get six or, six or 800 back, six or 800,000 back in the day. I can't crack 300 now. I suck. And then, <laughs> so this is, um... A question. Now, this one says, if MIB were to be replaced, would, what would you like to see in its place? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I would like, I don't know what I'd love to see in terms of IP, because that's an ever shifting landscape, you know, whatever is the cool movie at the time. Universal's got a lot of stuff to choose from, yeah. you know? Um, I would just want a, an evolution of a game based attraction somehow. Right, I would want something yeah. that is interactive in a in a new way, in a more modern way. Yeah. Um, the shooting rides have really advanced. Like the if, if, if the other ones that are being built now are not the infrared targeting systems like what we yeah, have. I don't like those as much. To be honest. Like the, the well, but the, like, like the I, new Spider Man opening at DCA. Yeah, that's it's got the the web yeah, slinging or whatever. The one, but like for instance, I rode the I rode the Buzz Lightyear ride in Shanghai, mm -hmm. and it's an evolution of that game system that is so good. 
like it's snappy. It's it's the reaction time is very very fast. Really? The game is really good, and it's all because instead of using infrared, they're using camera tracking. Like all the sets have cameras on them, and they're looking for your laser dot. You know, so they're much faster. So I would love to see that, but also like. You know, I think Mario Kart's a really good example of it's got two game mechanics at the same time. Yeah. One is shooting, sh one is shooting and, and, and uh, with aiming with your head, shooting turtle shells. The other is the left and right. Everybody's got to yeah. time it to get the, the coins. That's really, really cool. That's like it's it's adding a layer of gameplay that actually has some stakes because the not only do you have to get your own score, but the the car together has to score uh, and turn the right direction to get the extra coins. So I think. I would love to see something like that that has a, a lot more gamification and you know we're dealing with an audience now that has been I, I, I'm sort of the first video game audience and I had an Atari in the 70s right but now you have video games are just yeah. embedded into culture and you have people that are expecting that kind of control and agency so I would want to see a ride that pays off on that idea yeah and then during testing what was the highest score you remember seeing <laughs> Uh, probably upwards of six of six or seven thousand, six, six or six hundred, six six hundred or seven hundred thousand. I think if again, my memory is very hazy. I'm old, um, but yeah, I think upwards of that. I think there were a couple of maintenance guys. Uh, I remember getting eight and nine hundred, and we thought, oh well, yeah, but they play it every day, you know. But of course, we didn't account for season pass holders yeah. and Facebook clubs. <laughs> so um, no, I, I mean, I met the, uh, the, the, the uh, whoa, sorry, keep shaking your camera. Um, uh, Nick's daughter Bella, the, who did the MIB nine hundred club, like she's ten and she can max out. Like that blows my mind. It's great. And then another question. Is, yeah. What are some secrets about the world that probably aren't like known yet? Um, well, everybody knows about Frank the Pug. Mm -hmm. He's a secret target. There are targets in the Big Bug, and it's like upper really? lip. Yeah, there, so you'll see little you, holes. Can you still shoot while you're in the Big Bug? Not inside, but from the outside, off? where you see the, the little teeny head. Underneath uh -huh. that teeny head, there's like a lip, kind of. There's a bunch of little really? dots on that. Those are sensors. Do those give a lot of points? Or? I don't recall. You got to try. Okay. Um, the hardest part with all the targets is because they're a physical infrared target, there's a, mm -hmm. a mesh over all of them, and yeah. often they get filled with dust. So yeah. part of the big maintenance is blowing it out. So some, sometimes they'll work, sometimes they won't. Just keep trying it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know what they're worth, to be honest. Um, um, what is another good secret? Inside the big bug, uh, hidden inside that, that sculpt, is a little time capsule. Really? That's uh, all badges and photos and, and and stuff from the production team. And we cool. put it, it in before we sealed it up. No, it's floor? it's inside. You can, it won't come out until they tear the thing down. Um, cool. So it was like baked into the into the sculpt. Um, uh, everybody knows about Steven Spielberg's head, yeah. right? That was actually a direction from Steven himself because he's an executive creator for the parks and we, they present everything to him. So I had to pitch the ride to him, and in pitching that, he had a list of really cool ideas, and one of them was. Um, he said, hey, can we, it would be Make funny if it was a, alien? well, it's, yeah, he said, well, I should be an alien. And we were like, okay, we'll do that. And we turned him into one. <laughs> um, but you know, the, uh, I mean, this, the, 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 there's no so much, so much, not so much secrets, but things that just change in development. Like the exterior of the building wasn't going to be the World Expo. It was going to be yeah. the battery vent and tunnel building from the movie, which is that big boring building. And you walk through the room with the fans. It was yeah. just like the film, but it didn't fit on that side of the park. And so... That changed. The, the universe in you was not the original ending. Yeah. The original ending was the Tropicana Orange Juice Factory because we were owned by Seagram's at the time and it was a weird left turn at the end of the ride. But nobody got it and we needed to do something that even if you didn't see the movie, you understand what cool. a neuralizer means. So we knew it needed to be a bookend. So it's not so much secrets as those are the kind of things that as you're developing, it changes over time. Yeah. Um I don't really have any other questions. I mean, if there's any other info you'd like to talk about, you know, no. But if you got other other I, other things you want to ask, feel free. Uh, and and you know, to all everybody's watching, I'm on Twitter at Dave Cobb on Twitter. Ask me anytime. Yeah, I'll, I'll put your profile Please. in the description and link it. I'll add, ask me any questions you want. Well, yeah. the YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel as well. That's got a, I'm a finding a lot of fun stuff. behind the scenes stuff yeah, this I saw, year. I saw like you had the um, set up backstage in the warehouse with the little track. A little test track. The one I just recently posted is a mock-up of the Taylor alien at the end because we had to figure out how that was going to work. Um, Which one's the Taylor alien? Taylor alien is when you win the score and it's the suit and he oh, says, oh, are you ready yeah, next yeah. Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we mocked that up on a table scale um, as a little puppet that was done by a bunch of people so we can get the, the, the angle as the vehicles go by, get the sight lines, figure out how the animatronic is going to work. It's an cool. active maquette, basically. Um, that's my voice too, by the way. Woo! 
We'll be ready next Wednesday. That's me. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> th does Universal um, set up like test tracks for every ride backstage? Or? Um, yeah, it depends on the ride. But there's if it's a, a big piece of new engineering, yes, there's usually a mock-up. Um, these projects have a lot of mock-ups. Like, we mocked up the ride vehicle. We mocked up the game system. We mocked up the paint that was going to go on all the all the color palette of the ride so that we would know whether or not you could see your laser. We mocked up the big bug so we could figure out, out of like foam core, like it was a big paper model, to figure out how big he needed to be to be impressive, how far for reach envelope, what, what was he going to look like, how was he going to move. Um, we mocked up the elevator gag in the very beginning because if you have a, a what's called a pulse point there at the beginning, you don't want to do what, what we call, you don't want to starve the load station. You have to have enough people going in the building so that the load station is never empty. So we needed to figure out how many people need to be in that elevator, how many times does it have to cycle. So we mocked it up with a group of people to see how long it took to get people in and out of it. So m all of these things have m multiple layers and layers and layers of mock-ups. That's not even counting individual mock-ups for effects. Like we mocked up the fog inside the bug. We mocked up the little water laser aliens. We Everything in there got a mock-up at one time or another. It's nuts. I know, um, someone I know said they were working on the Mario Kart attraction down in Orlando. I think yep. they were with Dynamic Attractions. Yep. So they said they had a little warehouse and they set up a mock-up for Mario. Yeah, they did have that down here. I, I didn't see it, but I've, yeah. I've seen the video now. It looks so fun. I, I know they had Mario. Um, I'm assuming they don't have that from Velocicoaster. They just put that in the Intamin test plants, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, Intamin's they, built that kind yeah. of coaster before, so it's so really more about layout really at that point. That, yeah. Right. The engineering yeah. of the how it needs there. to work is already there. Yeah. 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 They probably did mock-ups for the, I don't know, the but they probably did mock-ups for things like the lights, yeah. you know, to see how it looks. So they would do that at Universal, like backstage? Sometimes. Sometimes it's done with the vendor, right? It really depends. And then, um, what? Was it MTS that designed? MTS did the ride vehicle for, um, for Men in Black. They also did Cat in the Hat. Yeah. Um, back in the day, they did, uh, uh, well, it was engineered at Disney, but MTS assisted with the building of Indiana Jones, the original one. Because um, they, what, th th that all came from, they're an industrial design company, but they do um, auto testing. They do the, the testing beds that you put cars on that shake them up. The bus bar stuff, too? But that's, yeah, but they had a little um, ride division yeah. that did this. So, yeah, they did the original engineering. Okay, and then, um, what other attractions have you worked on, like, in other parts, too? So, uh, I my first job was on Back to the Future in California, um, not as a creative, but as a coordinator. <laughs> um, uh, I was a show writer for the for T two three D, but for the Hollywood version for some additional stuff in the queue. Um, I worked on the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas, so it's no, that's no longer. Um, the, but the biggest thing I worked on was. Um, a park that opened in Abu Dhabi in 2018 called Warner Brothers World Abu Dhabi. Oh, okay. It's the world's largest indoor theme park. It's about 1.4 million square foot indoor theme park. It tells uh, all the attractions, tell the stories of uh, um, DC Comics, Looney Tunes, and Amber Barra. Um, so that's, and I have videos of that on my channel people can go see. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's not really well known here because it's really not for this audience, but it was like a, you know, it was a billion dollar theme park. It was a, a big deal. I worked on that for almost a decade. Thank you for the interview. You're very welcome, Ethan. Hi, everybody. Thanks for loving the ride. And go check out his channel. I'll link it all below. So drop a follow, subscribe to him, and then yeah. All right, guys. So we just interviewed Dave Cobb. So I will link his profile and channel and everything in the description. Go follow him and everything. Right now, we are going towards Simpsons and the Universally Crafted Meetup. They're having another meetup, so we might film a little there. And yeah, I would like to say thank you to Dave for letting me interview him today. I appreciate it. Please. There we go. Thank you. Awesome. That's the first performer I've seen throwing beads out today. I haven't really seen any. Happy Mardi Gras! Happy Mardi Gras! Oh, this is recording. You recording? Hey, how we doing today? Doing good. Good? Mm -hmm. I see you have a pub. You out of school today? No. No? No, this is a weekend. Oh, it's a weekend. That's right. It's a weekend, but it's a, it's a boarding school, right? So is there really any weekend? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Happy, Happy Mardi Gras, my man. Take care, buddy. You too. So 
we just got off Simpsons. Now we're heading around the front of the park and we might hit a few attractions and then go to islands pretty soon as well. So it's a pretty crowded day today, so if you have an express pass, I definitely recommend using that around the parks. So right now we are in the UAP lounge in Universal Studios, the pass order lounge. And they have a deal with the Mardi Gras mask right now. If you buy a lanyard, you can get a mask 50% off. So, it might be for the lanyards and the masks, but they still have medium and larges in stock here. So I just came out of the UOAP lounge and we got our pass holder pin for the month of April. It's supposed to be Harry Potter themed. The Bert, Birdie Bot's Jelly Beans. And then next month will be a dinosaur egg for Velocicoaster. So the Universal showed off the pin yesterday. I could put the little video in here to show you guys. So right now we are headed to Barney again because there's another Universal crafting meetup. So we're gonna check it out for a little bit and then I'm gonna give you a Barney construction update as well. So this is the Universal crafting meetup again. Let's see what people are making and trading today. Everyone's making crafts today. Some pins. Some other crafts. So yeah, the meetup. There's a lot of people here today. We have Alexa over here. We interviewed her last time about the meetup. So good, definitely check out my last video. She had a little interview. Everyone's making crafts around here. There's a lot of they're trading masks and dragon eggs from Harry Potter. So if you need a mask, they'll trade you one. Or if you like Harry Potter, definitely come to the meetup. Um, let's see. How about, I have one. Would you like a one? You are welcome. What do we have here? I got some art from Beetlejuice. Pretty cool. And I got some marble. My sister paints all this stuff. So she painted all this? Yeah, that's her right there. Wow. And we've been doing giving away stuff all day, like bags. She makes all that stuff. So the people in this group are very crafty. So if you ever need, if you ever into crafts, or if you ever want to trade, there's plenty of other people here to do so. In the bottom. <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna be the one to trade. I'm actually gonna have to give this to my brother because he's obsessed with the photo. And I'll be on the next meetup. He won't be. I don't know. She'll probably do it. She's not rolling. And this, this is the fountain that replaced the Barney fountain with the statue. They recently remodeled it and they have like little water there that squirts. Definitely a cool fountain. Um, all proceeds that go into the fountain, like all the coins that people throw, just go to the Give Kids a World Village. Everyone's all dressed up in their cosplay, especially Harry Potter for the meetup. So, a lot of people dressed up. That's a Luna Lovegood right there from Harry Potter. Right now, we're gonna give a little update on the Barney attraction. So this is how Barney looks today. It looks pretty much the same. Nothing going on in the exterior. There might be some deconstruction going on inside, but we can't see that right now. We'll keep stopping here for most of our visits, and we'll give you any updates if anything changes. But this is all we can see right now, so. So we just left the University Crafted Meetup. I went there last time as well to the little meetup. So we already filmed the interview with Alexa, and she's the one that run the group. So definitely check them out on Facebook. I'll link their information in the description as well.
took the shortcut from studios into islands. It looks a little bit quieter over here for now. Um, they didn't want me to film backstage, so, but we're over here now. So right now we are headed to one of the Velocicoaster viewing areas from across the lagoon. It's been testing since we're here. I don't have footage right now, so let's go get some. So that car doesn't have a leading car on it. That train doesn't have. And Velocicoaster was announced recently that it's officially opening on June 10th. So if you want to ride Velocicoaster on grand opening day, come June 10th to ride it. Like I just previously stated, Velocicoaster is officially opening on June 10th, so it's going to be very crowded that day, And but it's going to be the grand opening of the ride. But now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I will tell you information about soft openings and how you can soft open Velocicoaster when soft openings are available. So soft openings usually occur and before the ride officially opens. And it's so riders can test the ride before it officially opens and they can see if there's any issues with the ride and the operating teams can get all the testing done and they can properly open the ride efficiently on opening day. Haggard did not have soft openings. So the opening day was a 10 hour wait and it was a little bit of a chaotic just day for everyone. So Velocicoaster is rumored to have soft opening dates as long as all the construction is coming along fine. Another thing about um, soft openings, another thing about soft openings is that they usually occur after official team member previews. And to see if a team member preview is happening, it'll be announced on the team member webpage. But right now for Velocicoaster, they have not had any team member previews thus far. So, the only people that have ridden the ride right now are the operating team members that are going to run the ride while it's open. They don't count as part of the team member previews because not any regular team member around the resort can ride right now. Just the operation team has ridden a couple times at this moment. So after the team member openings happen, the team member previews, then it's going to be really, really close to when soft openings are going to happen. And you should be able to soft open a few weeks after the team member previews. I would say you could probably soft open Velocicoaster the last three weeks of May. So if you're planning on visiting those weeks, you should probably be able to ride it. The last thing I have to say about soft openings is that to do a soft opening, they're free. You can, it's for everyone, not only pass holders. And all you have to do is sit and wait in front of the attraction with a whole bunch of people doing the same thing and you just wait for them to open it up to the people. And most team members will say they're not doing any soft openings, but they'll let you on anyways. And to wait for a soft opening, it's usually they happen around four or sometime in the late evening. 
So that's the time I would wait in front of Velocicoaster for a soft opening when they do those. Anyways, right now we are headed by the Popeye viewing area to get some Velocicoaster testing footage. I know a lot of people don't like the Popeye's music, but we have a good viewing angle from this area, so we're gonna go here anyway. So it looks like the bypass bridge is closed right now, and since the peak season of spring break is mostly over, they've closed that off for right now. Probably until Velocicoaster officially opens. We're gonna take a look, that's the top hat right there. I don't see any testing going on at the moment, so let's look though, because it was testing like five minutes ago. This is the launch tunnel for Velocicoaster, the second launch. So that's where you're gonna go from like 45 to 70 miles an hour, just in that tunnel. And you'll be going up the top hat. into the second half of the ride. Now this is the exit of the ride. And it looks like it's pretty much done on the exterior if you look. A lot of the paneling is complete right over there. And the exit and everything is ready to go. And there's another crane in the waterfront. So once that moves, the waterfront should open fairly quickly after that. So Velocicoaster has been constantly running again, so we're going to get some footage for you right now. Here it comes. Oh yeah. The lights are on the train right now as well. Stated, we are riding something new today. It isn't Velocicoaster, but it is Hulk. As some of you know, I haven't ridden Hulk yet, or as long as I've been here. So this will be my first ride on Hulk today. We're gonna see how it is. Never done it. So I just rode Hulk for my first time. I rode it two times, one in the front row and one in the back. So this isn't my first upside down coaster because I've done Mind Blower at Fun Spot before. But now this is my first multi-looping coaster. So I've, this is the first time I've ridden Hulk and I've been a pass holder pretty much since I was born. So definitely interesting. Um, I should probably post a guide for those scared to go on upside down coasters. So if you guys want to see that, um, let me know in the comments, and I'll probably make a video on that soon. Um, but yeah, front row is definitely not as, it's weightless compared to the back. You feel it more in the back. So for those wondering how it is, um, when you see like POVs of the ride, you see the world like twist around. You don't really get that on this ride. Um, it's just more of a camera thing, but you do see it on like one of the inversions. So it's really not that bad. So recently, 
Universal has brought back the T-Rex photo op in Jurassic Park. So we're going to go take a look at it. Rexy is back. So Rexy used to be around the first show scene of the Velocicoaster, but now she is right next to the Thunderfalls Terrace and King Kong. She is right here with this Jurassic Park car. She's not with the one she used to be with, but she's still here. They brought her back. She is not gone forever. So all of you that want to get photos with Rex, you can. And they still have the Spinosaurus on the other side of the park as well. So Velocicoaster has been rapid testing again. Today. That thing's flying. It's flying. This car does not have the front. So Velocicoaster has been testing very frequently the last few days. We're actually going to come around right over here now and see if the first show scene has any raptor sounds that we can hear. It's right over here. Let's see, let's go around here. Let's see if we can hear any audio from the first show scene. So it doesn't look like the pre-show audio is working today. So they're just not testing it right now, but maybe later they will be testing it. And they've also been repainting a lot of the signs around Discovery Center. So that one's been repainted. This one over here has been repainted. There's a few others, but the Discovery Center and Jurassic Park's getting a lot of touch-ups the last few weeks, and it's been really nice looking. So this is typically the entrance into the bypass bridge for Velocicoaster, but since the peak season of spring break is mostly over, the bypass bridge is closed today and it probably will be closed until the Velocicoaster officially opens so don't expect to get any Velocicoaster views from the by bypass bridge for a while until it gets around closer to June 10th maybe Let's see if we can see the train go by through the gate there it is So we tried riding Hagrid and they were down for technical difficulties and so we weren't able to ride it today. So we'll try again the next time and ride Hagrid. We're just going to chill around the park and see if we see more Velocicoaster and whatever else. So this is once again the Velocicoaster sign and the summer 2021 is hiding the wait time. So once it kind of opens, the wait time will be right there for you to see while you're walking around Jurassic Park. So that was the Velocicoaster passing by. The bypass bridge is closed, like I said earlier. That was the Velocicoaster. But yeah, so this is where you would enter to get to the front of the Discovery Center and into the front of the queue. And this is the recently repainted side of the building for the Discovery Center. And then, yeah, we're gonna go and watch it pass by one more time.
So if we go over by River Adventure, we have Nikki and Rick over here. Rick's Flicks. So if you haven't subscribed to Rick's Flicks already, please do. He's great. He's great you much. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. He, he's at the park all the time. So. Every other day, pretty much. I live yeah. here. Yeah, so if you want some really good universal content, subscribe to Rick's Flicks. Thanks so much, man. I'll put that in the video as well in the description. So we were just talking to Rick's Flicks, and I gave him a shout out. So definitely follow him. His information should be in the description. He makes great videos, so definitely drop him a follow. So in replacement of Grad Batch this year, a lot of high schools for the seniors are doing field trips. So they have this merchandise out for the class of 21 at Universal Studios. It's a tie-dye shirt. So if any of you are coming for field trips, this is one of the merchandise options they have for seniors. And the price of this shirt is $30, which is pretty steep. So usually Hard Night shirts are $28, so this one's a little higher priced. And that's a small, so I bet they're all the same price though. So. So earlier we showed the new masks. We have a Popeye in color and an American flag one. So the, the one in color is newer. And they have the new Hello Kitty mask, but that one's also new. So, so Velocicoaster has a height stick right in front of Islands of Adventure so you can measure how tall you are, how tall you have to be to ride. It's 51 inches and then they have the coming summer 2021. But they have announced the date since, like I said earlier, June 10th, and you can ride the Velocicoaster. This is the Universal Studios store at night. The lighting looks really cool on it, so we're gonna come around and look at in the corner and see what it looks like. And the sign is all lit up over there too, so it looks pretty neat. So yeah. That's it. So we're headed out right now. Thank you for watching everyone. Uh, we had an exciting day, a long day at Universal. And we'll be back later this week, so stay tuned. We rode Hulk for the first time, that was a really big achievement. Um, we met some amazing people today, I'll link everything in the description for those people. Go check out their channels, their social media. And go check out my social media, follow me on Twitter at Ethan Hershey. And follow me on Instagram, at Florida Theme Park Picks, or you can just search the Orlando Tourist on there. And you can find me as well. So, thank you for watching, and stay tuned.